Hi, I'm Rob. Um, I'm a project management consultant in Australia. Um, I write, actually just uh, write code for fun. Um, I'm here to talk about some exciting improvements that I've been working on in the uh, uh, tracing space. Um, and I did have this slide here. Um, why do I care about tracing? Um, I think some of the panelists at the start really covered this. They all identified execution tracing as like one of the most important things that they um, they lack about Zio. Um, but basically, ever since we started using um, async on the JVM, uh, we got all of these nonsensical errors, which um, just don't help us at all. Um, and this is something that's been hinted at uh, over the last couple of presentations, um, the JVM, the JVM is a VM. Um, we've effectively built a VM on top of that, but it doesn't know anything about that. So um, that's the cause of a lot of these issues, I think. Um, so uh, Zero was the first to introduce uh, tracing to the functional effects system. Uh, I think Kai did a lot of work on that. Um, it's definitely revolutionary at the time. Um, but it's got some rough edges um, and there's a significant performance cost to running that. Um, there's some common um, feedback that we've received. Um, execution traces are uh, pretty full of junk um, and there's roughly a two times slowdown uh, if you're running tracing. So what this means is users often turn off tracing for speed in critical areas of their application, uh, and then something breaks. Um, so at the moment, uh, this is what a failure looks like. You get the execution trace, um, and sort of a little bit hard to see what's going on here. Um, if this was a performance critical part and you turned off tracing, uh, you get even less to play with. Um, so, just wanted to talk a little bit about why it's so slow. Uh, and this actually leads into um, why there is so much junk in the execution traces as well. Um, so basically, we want to hide um, what's going on. And the way that's done is we've got this Zio function thing. Um, and basically, we take trace as uh, it's an any ref, but that's a function. Um, and we basically wrap a real function with this zero function thing. And every combinator you add is wrapping more and more and more. Um, and then of course, once we wrap it, we've got to unwrap it before we can actually um, see what it is. Um, so this is all happening at runtime. Uh, it takes a lot of time to do. Uh, there's lots of allocations. Um, which all need to be garbage collected afterwards. Um, there's been a huge amount of complexity added to the runtime. Um, and here's where we get into the junk in the um, execution traces. Um, we need a lot of discipline to make sure that everything that is internal is wrapped in a zero function. Otherwise, we start getting internals leaking out into those execution traces. Um, also, the way this works uh, is using reflection. Um, that's only a, a small part at the start um, until you build up a cache of all this tracing information. Uh, but that basically means this won't work on um, Scala.js or native. Um, and once we actually print a stack trace or an execution trace, um, we need to consume a fair bit of memory and do even more allocations. Um, and if you're if your error is caused by running low on memory, um, it's going to use even more. Um, so probably won't get the information that you need. Um, so better way forward uh, and what I've been spending a little bit of time on, moving runtime work to compile time. 
and funnily enough, using implicit string literals, which seems like a good way to get downvoted on uh, Stack Overflow. Um, but this is um, there's a lot of compelling benefits to uh, using them. Um, so basically, string literals are interned, which means most tracing information is pre-allocated at startup and never needs to be garbage collected. Um, we can use reference equality, uh, which is really fast, and that helps with the hiding of the internals. Um, and it doesn't use reflection, which means we're going to be seeing tracing on Scala.js and Scala native. Um, and implicits, uh, the use of implicits um, basically deals with the entire problem of hiding the internals for us at the small cost of some RSI from all the copying and pasting of uh, the extra implicit that I needed to add to every combinator in Zio. Um, and there's still a little bit more to do on that uh, in some of the other areas. Um, took some inspiration on this from um, Lee Howey's source code library. Um, it's a handy little library which is used for capturing information from your source codes at compile time using macros. Um, and yeah, basically um, runs at compile time and it's generating string literals. But um, if you've got implicit strings in scope, um, that's, yeah, as I said before, not a great idea. Um, but if we hide the fact that it's a string from the compiler, um, that makes it a whole lot safer. Um, it means that you, um, if you are using an implicit string for some reason and you really shouldn't be, that's not going to um, mess with that. Um, but um, yeah, so you can't accidentally add a random string to your tracing information. Um, there's always uh, an implicit in scope. Um, so uh, implicit def in scope to generate a trace for you. Um, so you don't have to import anything for this. And um, yeah, basically we end up with uh, way better performance uh, due to very few allocations. Uh, we've got much better clay traces, which are clean. Um, we've got clickable code paths. We've got a little star there because uh, IntelliJ seems to be um, a little bit inconsistent with uh, picking these up. Uh, there is a little uh, plugin which does help it a bit, but it's still not ideal. So um, there's some potential there to maybe include some extra support in um, Zero for IntelliJ. Um, and users can now hide their internals as well and pretty easily, which is not something that was previously available. And um, as I mentioned before, we've got Scala.js and native support now. Um, so the other thing I mentioned was the slowdown. Um, these are all of the benchmarks that currently exist, uh, which have a traced and untraced variety. Um, and showing the performance of the traced uh, benchmark versus the untraced benchmark. Um, so as you can see, there's still a cost, but it's a big improvement on what we had before. And I actually only got this working uh, probably about 24 hours ago. So uh, this is with no real optimizations. Um, so these numbers will improve and hopefully quite a bit. Um, so with the improvements that John's made to the runtime system, um, I think you'll probably find that running tracing on a Zio 2.x application is faster than um, untraced on Zio 1, uh, which is pretty uh, a pretty good um, advantage. Um, so how does this impact users? Um, well, if this is your app, um, this is what your app looks like. Um, this is actually the app that uh, had the execution trace before. Um, it's a pretty simple thing. We saw there was a fair bit of uh, confusion. Uh, if we just quickly jump back there. Um, lots of stuff there for what is very simple. Um, so um, as a little example, um, going to play some uh, Oregon Trail. Um, we don't see the execution traces or anything like that unless uh, something goes wrong. So 
modified that app a little bit. And this is also the information that you would see if you turned on implicit hints in IntelliJ. You can see all of those new traces is where the macro is running and adding some tracing information. Um, so uh, what's it look like now? When we run the app, asks our name, provide the name, and then we get uh, an exception saying Rob has died of dysentery. Um, but look at the execution trace. Um, you sort of got to read it from the bottom up. Um, that's just a, a function of the way it works. We could have it the other way around, but these can potentially get quite long. So it's best to have the most recent thing at the top, but you can see we started at line 12, we went to line 16, line 16, line 17, line 17, line 18, line 18, line 19, and it should have gone to, I can't see the end because I've cut it off to make this big enough that you can read it. Um, but basically there's no junk there. Um, we've also got the method from which it was called within. Um, and yeah, it's just a much cleaner experience and much faster. Um, got some future work to go. Um, John hinted before there's some work on summarizing some of this information and making it um, a bit prettier. Um, also, I am working on some other macros which you can add to um, internals so that you can avoid accidentally generating new traces um, and instead use um, force you to um, get an implicit from somewhere else, which generally just means adding an implicit um, said trace element. Um, and yeah, we've got a little bit more optimization to go as I mentioned before. Um, but yeah, it's um, a big speed up. It's much cleaner. Um, it's gonna be a, a much better experience. Um, I'm hoping that uh, the panelists that we're talking about um, how much they relied on the execution tracing, even in that um, previous format. Um, hopefully they'll find this a lot more useful for debugging their applications. That's about it for me. Um, there's a link to Lee Howie's uh, source code library there, um, which a lot of this work is heavily inspired by. Um, and output link filter is an IntelliJ plugin just makes that uh, clickable link experience a little bit more consistent. Um, it seems to sometimes pick it up, sometimes not. Um, and sometimes it gets line and column numbers confused. But um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm on GitHub or sometimes I'm hanging around on the uh, Discord channel. Um, so you can get in contact with me there if you need to. All right, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you.